So in the same way that velocity is the rate of change of displacement and acceleration is the rate of change of our velocity, we can also talk about the rate of change of our work done by a force as power. So power is the rate of change of work. Now in the same way that we can talk about average and instantaneous velocity and average and instantaneous acceleration, we can also talk about average and instantaneous power. So once again, work is the transfer of energy from one form to another by the use of a force. And power is the rate of change of that work done. Now average power given with the bar symbol on top is equal to the work done divided by the time it took to do that work and this is equivalent to the amount or quantity of energy transformed, the change in energy, divided by the time it took for that transformation of energy to take place. Now, instantaneous power has the following formula or equation. To find the instantaneous power at any given moment, we have to take the derivative of our work function with respect to time. Now, what exactly are the units of power? Well, because work and energy have the units joules and time has the units of seconds, that means the units for power are joules per second, which is commonly known as a watt. So one watt is one joule per second. Now, whenever we talk about engines and the power of an engine, we talk about horsepower. We specify the power of an engine using horsepowers. So recall that engines convert electrical or chemical work into mechanical energy. So, one horsepower is equivalent to 746 watts, which is equivalent to 746 joules per second. So there are this many joules per second in one horsepower. So for example, if our car has 1,000 horsepower, we simply take this number multiplied by 1,000 and that gives us the power of our car, of the engine, in terms of joules per second. So in order to differentiate between energy and power, let's look at the following example. Let's suppose an 80 kilogram athlete runs up a flight of stairs in five seconds. Now if the vertical height of the stairs is six meters, we want to calculate A, how much energy this requires, and B, the average power. So let's look at A and let's look at our diagram. So we have our staircase that has a vertical distance of 6 meters. So let's choose this, the ground, to be H0 equals 0 meters and the final height is 6 meters. So our person changes their gravitational potential energy. And how much gravitational potential energy does the person gain when he goes from the ground to the following height of 6 meters? So change in our gravitational potential energy is equal to mgh minus mgh naught. So because h naught is zero, this term cancels out, and we see that our gravitational potential energy that the person gains is equal to 4,704 joules. So now we know how much time it takes for that person to gain this much, this quantity of energy. So we can find the average power by simply taking our change in energy, change in gravitational potential energy, and dividing it by the time elapsed. So since it took 5 seconds, we have 4,704 joules divided by 5 seconds, and the average power of the person is 940.8 watts, joules per second.